funnily enough, I had planned going into today um, to make a new uh, Overlord volume breakdown for season one, but during the day I heard some news that a new trailer for the Robo Holy Kingdom movie that's coming out soon uh, had dropped, so I decided to change plans today. Today I am just going to break down this trailer a little bit for you guys, um, see what they show, kind of explain what is shown in the trailer. Once again, I'm going to try to avoid any sort of plot spoilers. I'm not going to say like, oh, this person does this in the the, the movie or whatever. I'm not going to tell you the plot of the movie or what goes on. But, you know, there's a lot of new things shown in this trailer. A lot of new people that, you know, anime onlys will have no idea who these people are. I thought I'd just go ahead, give a little bit of information so you, you can go in slightly informed, um, so you're not going to be completely blind, but you're also not going to know any plot things. I'm not going to tell you, like, oh, this person dies, or, oh, this person fights this person, or something like that. I'm not going to tell you anything like that. It's going to be information that you could, like, maybe consider spoilers or whatever, but I'm not going to go into anything with the plot so I, at your own risk whatever you want if you want to leave now and not know anything be feel free to do so get out out but if you aren't let's go ahead and get into the trailer there's there's one thing i noticed first like when we started off and it maybe it's just the translation with the subtitles in the subtitles in the trailer it calls everyone the sacred Kingdom, it's the Sacred Queen, also Robel is spelled differently. I've always known it as the Robel Holy Kingdom, uh, though, so that's what I'm calling it, uh, but it seems that it's been translated as, like, the Sacred Kingdom, which is fine, it's same shit, you, you, you know, whatever. So it starts off here, the Robel Sacred Kingdom, a small country under invasion. So yes, I have explained this before in my Robel Holy Kingdom explained video, I'll leave a link to that, uh, I'll put a card there if you want to check it out. But yeah, the Robel Holy Kingdom, I guess you could say it's a small country, like, like compared to the three we're really familiar with, which is the Riestes Kingdom, Baharuth Empire, and Slain Theocracy, it is smaller than those uh, three, so I guess you could call it a small thing. Ooh, that's kind of small. Yikes. The main thing is that the Robo Holy Kingdom is bordered by uh, the demi-human planes. That has been a very big problem for them like since the country's inception, is dealing with constant incursions from the demi-humans uh, in that region. So they, they are basically a country that is always at war with um, and in conflict with the demi-human tribes that live near them. So then we move on, and so we obviously see some sort of interaction um, between the Robo Holy Kingdom and the Sorcerer Kingdom with Albedo being shown on here, and like, oh, so this is the Sorcerer Kingdom. I've shown the map of the New World, but I'll put it up on screen here, but like, the Robo Holy Kingdom is very segregated from the rest of the New World. It is kind of off on its own, especially being blocked by the demi-human planes because it's a peninsula. They they have like one land route to the Riestes Kingdom, but like being bordered by the demi-human planes, like Bakes, bakes them effectively cut off landwise from like all the other human nations. And the Sorcerer Kingdom is like in the southeastern part of the Riestes Kingdom. So it's pretty far away. It's pretty far removed from the uh, Robo Holy Kingdom. And so it's not surprising that they haven't like had any interaction with them, uh, you know, at this point, especially because the Sorcerer Kingdom is still pretty early on um, at this point in the story. So then moving on, we see some clips with uh, the Pallades in their masks. If you recognize these masks, from uh, season two during the uh, Operation Gehenna in Riestes. I don't feel like this is a spoiler at this point to say, but like obviously we are going to get some Yaldabaoth like a role play again from Demiurge and just from those masks, you can tell like, yes, there, there's going to be that again. And also in the teaser trailer that was released before uh, showed Demiurge in that mask again. So the Yaldabaoth thing is coming back in this movie. I'm trying to skip any plot spoilers here, so I'm not gonna talk about what the hell's going on there. So. Now we have a new character here. Now, this girl, her name is Ni Nia, I think is how you pronounce it. Nia, uh, maybe, I don't know. N-E-I-A, that's how you spell her name. She's not exactly normal. Um, as you can see from her face, she's very serious looking. I remember reading somewhere that Mariama even said that like her mental state is not very stable. She is a point of view character in the in the light novels. Uh, she is very, very important, so, so definitely keep your eyes out. She is a squire to paladins in the Holy Kingdom, and uh, paladins are basically like their elite knight forces uh, because they are the Holy Kingdom. So a lot of their forces are revolve around like holy magic and, you know, paladins and, and just kind of those classes of warriors. That's, that's kind of their thing. But yeah, she's a point of view character in the light novels. Uh, 
um, and so she's an important character during this arc of the story. Moving on, we see this clip of Ainz here. Um, he's obviously wearing some, he is decked out in this new white robe. He's got the staff of Einzel going with him right there. Unfortunately, giving any more information as to what is exactly going on here is a plot spoiler. So I'm gonna just skip right past that, but you can admire uh, Ein Sama Drip right there. So now we get to this character, uh, Re Remedios, I believe is how you pronounce her name. She's a very powerful warrior in the Robo Holy Kingdom. She's actually a member of the most elite combat unit in the Robo Holy Kingdom, which is a group called Nine Colors. And I, I really like this p a clip of her and like her saying what she says. Also, her voice actress in this clip is nice. Yeah, that, that's, a, that's a really good uh, clip for her. So in that clip, she says, demons and undead, whichever size, you know, gets wiped out, it's okay for us, right? And that's because um, in the Robo Holy Kingdom especially, um, they have a very big, uh, like, distrust and a very big bias against any sort of, like, negative aligned creatures, such as demons and undead, and that's mainly because they're a very religious country. They are also extremely prejudiced against demi-humans because of, like, all the problems they've had. Um, with them uh, in the demi-human demi plane. So that sentiment that uh, Remedios says and expresses in this scene is very common in the Robo Holy Kingdom. It's not particularly, um, you know, unique, but that bias mainly stems from their religious practices as well as just their history with the demi-humans that border them. She is actually also a good friend of the queen of the Holy Kingdom. I, I will just go ahead and say I do not like her. Uh, she's like one of those characters that think that thinks she's better than she actually is, in my opinion. Uh, she's a lot like Philip in that regard, just like, just unfounded arrogance, I think. Oh my dude, you just got pranked. Now granted, she has more of a reason to be cocky because she's actually like super powerful, like relatively to like, you know, her surroundings and everything like that. I'm, I'm not a huge fan of her medias, so, uh, but, she, but she is a major character in this part of the story. Now next we have this showing of Kellart Custodio, which is actually um, Remedios' younger sister. So you can see her right there. Now I have to say, her design in the anime, um, she looks kind of different than how I think she does in the light novel. She, she, uh, I, I'm not entirely sure. Uh, there's only one picture of her from the light novel, I think. And she is a priest. So she's a member of the church and she is also very powerful as well. She is not a member of Nine Colors, which is their elite battle unit because, um, priests are not allowed to, uh, you know, be members of that. And the reason why these two are shown is because they are both very close to the queen. They are both like principal advisors to the queen. They are called the wings of the holy queen. Like, and I think that's funny. That, that just reminds me of One Piece and the wings of the pirate king uh, with Zoro and Sanji. But they are very, very important political uh, people in the Robo Holy Kingdom too. So that's something to remember moving forward. This is Kalka Besarez, and she is the uh, holy queen of the kingdom. Kingdom. She is the ruling monarch and she is interesting. I actually liked learning about her history um, because it, it exposes more about the history of the Robo Holy Kingdom. So she is the first actual female ruling monarch in the Holy Kingdom's history. Um, before her, the only like ruling monarchs were men. And because of this, she came into power kind of under a little bit of controversy um, because she has an older brother and he should have come first in the line of succession based on how this primitive medieval society's succession rules are. Also, there was a little bit of controversy about, like, the, the two sisters that I explained, um, like, oh, they're supporting her, like, oh, the temples are, are backing you and everything like that. Oh, I'm taking my headphones off, my heads are getting my head, I'm not even listening to the audio anyway. But the whole, the Robo Holy Kingdom is divided into two separate, like, kingdoms, really. There's the northern part and the southern part. The northern part is the part that's directly controlled by the monarch. Kalka. The southern part, while still technically being under the mantle of the monarchy, uh, the nobles have way more control there than they do in the north. Ever since Kalka's ascendancy, they've been they've been stirring. They haven't like openly rebelled or anything. She hasn't like she hasn't like done anything that like could be like openly like you know illegitimate or something like that or be considered illegitimate uh, to like overthrow her. So there hasn't been like open rebellion. They've just been a little more discontent ever since she came into power. Uh, Kalka isn't necessarily a bad ruler. Um, she's just really idealistic. Uh, she she wants to make a lot of she wants to make everyone happy. She refuses to take like hardline stances with the southern nobles. So like she is, it's hard for her to it's been hard for her to consolidate her power 
over the whole region because of that. Like she, she just is uh, sometimes incapable of making the really hard decisions that uh, come with being an absolute monarch. You know, she seems to be portrayed very well, drawn very well in the uh, uh, anime. So I'm excited to see her be animated. I like learning about her um, in the light novel. So we're gonna get more of that. So then moving on, we see like some more stuff going on. These are obviously demi-human goat people and holding this a uh, person hostage and, and like there, there's clearly an assault happening uh, like there's an Ademi human army that would be plot stuff so I'm not gonna get into that we have more stuff see Remedios uh, frowning which uh, is not an uncommon occurrence <laughs> so I will just go ahead and say that and then yeah we have Nia Nihia N-E-I-A Baraja 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 I don't I don't know if you use pronounce it with the J or the ha sound I think it's Baraja and yeah, Nia, uh, I already talked about Nia, so we'll go ahead and skip over that. I don't know if you guys recognize these, but these are angels, and those are from season one. So the magic casters of the Robo Holy Kingdom are, uh, you know, the religious magic casters. They're all about holy magic and priesthood and stuff like that. It's a holy kingdom, kind of makes sense. It's a re religious nation. So like the Slain Theocracy, which is also a religious nation, so they can summon angels like the, the uh, Slain Theocracy can. The Archangel Flames. So that is, it's similar magic magic between the two, um, even though they actually do have two separate religions. So now, yeah, we have more scenes with Ainz, Nia, and then we have this happening. Um, I don't know if I should say anything about this. Uh, I, yeah, I tell you what, I'm, I, I'm just gonna, I'm gonna save it. I'm, I, I'll, I'll save it. Uh, I, I don't, I don't know about that. So, okay, then we have, okay, yeah, this, this freaking thing saying the Sorcerer King is dead. I mean, like, okay, like, that's, I, I, I feel like I can't say anything about that or elaborate on it at all because that's just, I, that's a, that's a hell of a statement to make. But that's the trailer, guys. It's a pretty short trailer. You know, I, I really just wanted to talk more about the Holy Kingdom and the characters that make it up now that we're actually seeing those characters, um, you know, new ones introduced and they like listed their names and they also talked about their uh, voice actors. It's exciting. The animation looks really good on this. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm sure everyone here is just hyped to get more Overlord content. We're all starved for it. I know I am. This is also just a really interesting two volumes that we're going to get, guys. So um, I hope maybe I provided you with a little more information. Uh, like I said, there I didn't want to do any plot spoilers. There was, there was unfortunately like half this trailer was like if I talked about it, like I'd have to give you some plot spoilers because like it's just like that. I mean, that, that's like straight up plot, like right there. And I'm just like, well, I can't really say anything about that because I would ruin it for you. But as I said, guys, I hope to do at least a couple videos on the Holy Kingdom movie when it comes out. Maybe like one video for the volume uh, 12 content and one video for the volume 13 content. If it's like super long. I could like split it up into multiple videos, but I'm going to do at least two I would say over this movie just because there's two volumes that they're covering and I'm super excited guys It looks clean. It looks good. The voice acting sounded great Um, you know everyone's coming in it looks like this massive conflict even though I've read the night levels I'm still really excited to see this stuff animated and brought to life So guys, what did you think of the overlord the sacred kingdom trailer leave your thoughts in the comment section below? I'd love to hear from you guys. Did you find out anything new? Did you like it? And if you did please hit that like button to let me know you'd like to see more content like this And if you aren't already, please subscribe to the channel it helps me out more than you know and it'll let you know when I post in the future. With that being said, I want to thank you all for watching to the very end of the video and I will see you all next time. Bye!